and where amen, I am today. Amen to that. Do you want to repeat yeah. that? No, it's true. I know. Re no, repeat it because I, I, I caught it, but I want to hear it again because it's important. Okay. okay. Well, every single thing that I've been through, yeah. every, every job that I've had, yeah. every bump in the road, yeah. every huge dilemma that I've had to face, yeah. everything has shown me and given me wisdom and insight. Yeah. And it all is culminating in needing all of that knowledge for what I'm doing today. Yeah. So literally my entire life yeah. has been the groundwork to form me, to make me into who I am today, to yeah. do what I want to do for today, which is help people and help them be happy and succeed and be successful. Yeah. Pretty cool, huh? It's cool. It's cool. It sounded like you almost thought we were live or something. Well, I looked at the camera anyway, so because I, I got to get used to doing that while I'm talking to you. I got, down. I got a surprise for you. What? We're live right now. I know. <laughs> I started early. Okay, hold on. Don't worry. Don't worry. Hey guys. Okay, I'm going to. I'm okay. going to shadow out Carol's face. I'm going to shadow out my face. We'll be back in two and two. Hair and makeup's about to come in. I just had to record that. It's a little preview because it was so authentic. And I completely agree, Carol. We're live right now. If there's anything you want to say before we take it. Uh, guys, honestly, I'm setting this guy up. Give me a 30 second break. We're going to put our face, we're going to put our faces on. You put your face on already. Yeah, I did mine already. You don't want to wait that long. <laughs> so would you think, would you think of me doing that to you? You know what this is going to be. I should have realized. But you've caught me so off guard today because we were going to, you know, do this later and we're doing it now. And so it was kind of, okay. Well, well here's, gotcha. the, here's the thing. We are actually going to be, uh, expect the unexpected today, Carol. <laughs> no everything, problem. Everything you've prepared for is going out the door. Okay. <laughs> Bring it on. on. Give us two Bring minutes. I'm going to okay. note your face. I'll mute you out. Okay, Carol? Okay. So don't don't go too far. I'm taking you out in about uh, one minute. All right. Okay? Let's get right this up. And guys, okay. I'm muting myself out. See you guys in exactly one minute. Bye bye. Okay, guys, can you see me? Are we back? How was that one minute break? How's the lighting? How are my angles? This is my good angle, folks. I better get serious. This is a serious show, but it can be fun too. Guys, today's guest, I'm um, going to first start by saying we've been having a series. Can you guys hear me, by the way? Let me know in the chat, please. That would be awesome. Okay. Today's guest is extra special. Today's guest, Carol Brown Earl, is the ninth person. Let me do the fingers, guys. Number nine. Those of you who did the content with me know what that means. Always use your fingers when doing a countdown list on videos because it's more effective in attention getting. You're welcome, everyone. Carol Earl, guys, is number nine in our BEM, our Branding University Executive Mastermind. These are the people that are going to pave the way, take your hand, in your journey of online personal branding to build your own brand. Kind of sounded like a pitch. Not really rehearsed, but that's what we do, guys. We personally brand you so that you can sell your product or your service through you. You are the entry point. So the executive mastermind, I should actually pop them up. I'm going to actually take a second here and give everyone a shout out. It's worth the time. Any BEM members on today? You want to put it in the chat, please? That'd be awesome. I'm actually going to name you all off right now because Carol Brown Earl is number nine of 10. Next week is Vanessa uh, Ketterer. I'm multitasking while I'm on the live here. We're locked up anyways, guys. So if you're in the back, I don't see everyone in the chat. Come on out and chat. Don't be shy. I see a lot of regular faces. I also see a lot of new faces. Just let me come in here and go like this and go like this and say, we have Robert Wall. We have Lori Ann Campbell. 
We have Bruno Lavrinovic, the income beast. We have Jenny Kals, the mindset guru. We have David Anderson from Red Dawn White Ministries. We have Roy Miller, the master mason. Oops, did I say that out loud? Careful, everyone. We have a master mason. I don't even know if I'm supposed to say that. Oops. Oopsies. We got Wendy Mush. We got M Michelle Paris. We got Carol Brown Earl. We got Vanessa Lara next week. Those folks. Let me just close this up. Folks, those are your Branding University Executive Mastermind members. They will be posted as the pinned post in the group. <clears throat> we will be running ads to that group. We will drive traffic to that group. And all of our BEM members, yes, you guys, you 10 people, all 10 of you that I just named, are going to be tagged up there. So as we drive new traffic in, you're going to get contacted and you're going to help people get started. Was that for free labor for Merkel alone? So guys, it's exposure. It's beautiful to the BEM members. But the reason I'm saying that is because I have trust in these 10 people. And I will also hold their hand with everything that I know, help them with everything that I know. But more importantly, they're going to educate me. They already have. As a matter of fact, Carol Brown Earl taught me a ton of stuff. 40 years experience in sales, guys. <clears throat> 40 years. That means she started when she was 10, I guess. I don't know. We're gonna, I don't know if we're going to address that. I'm going to go fast on the intro. But I do want to say something, uh, maybe a little bit from the heart. I'll start like this. I'm going to say that Carol, guys, has been working relentlessly on her brand, on her content, on her, on everything, on, uh, on actually setting Branding University people up that were not even under her. Carol's the type of, I was going to say girl, or the type of woman, type of girl, the type of girl that literally grabs you by the hand and helps you through, walks you through. Carol will get on a Zoom with people, and I'm always lurking. So I'm honored to have Carol as part of the Branding University Executive Mastermind. But there's another thing, but well, there's a lot of things. I'm not going to stay too long. I want to take her out because Carol and I, as a matter of fact, I'm going to take this down and I'm going to start the timer. Carol's a rambler as well. We'll start by that. Carol is a mother of five beautiful girls. <clears throat> she lives in Bristol, Virginia, Tennessee area. And keep it short, guys, trust me, sales for over 14 years, selling commercial ads, photography services. Uh, she actually owned her own photography studio from 95 to 2005. She's a professional photographer. I'm just dropping that. We may, we'll probably get into that. She also sold insurance. She even sold mobile homes. 40 years. 40 years. Um, at 16 years old, she, I guess she probably discovered her passion for sales when she was receptionist for her father's civil engineering and real estate business. And her father said she was a natural. I tend to agree. She studied, studied political science in college. She worked for Honeywell Security as a fleet administrator. Now, the reason I'm bringing that up is because Honeywell, Honeywell actually provided a lot of very specific training to Carol in the areas of creative problem solving. Sounds like a crazy, awesome course. Stress management. We're definitely going to talk about that one. And managing interpersonal relationships. She also worked for Media, uh, she worked for Media General, an internet media development company. True, she had many, Carol had many jobs. We may go through them quick, but if we kind of like myself, I've uh, had over 30 jobs. We can't go through them all, but I'm highlighting a couple because they led to training. Um, in IMD, Internet Media Development, Carol was this, she was the sales force. When she got into that company, she had no idea what she was doing. She was selling ads for paper, TV, and internet. She led her branch to reach the highest percentage of sales increase in the entire Eastern Seaboard. Now, Media General sent a, 
Carol on personal development training in selling and understanding interactive media. I know how to pick them, guys. I'm not even kidding. She started a successful fundraiser to raise money for schools, daycares. She was so good at uh, approaching daycares and she was actually known in the area as the daycare queen of Nashville. Probably gonna dive into that. I'm almost done, guys. I'm almost done, guys. Let me go a little bit in her transition into online, online, the online world. Like many of us, I think many of you will concur. She lost about three grand online on either online scams, misleading information, pyramid schemes. I said it. I shouldn't have said that. Not on this webinar. Uh, in 2015, she joined my lead system pro. I'm never, I never really hold back on saying that because that's where I started as well. She saw Mark Lalone teaching on Twitter stuff, started following me, joined the Firestarter Mentorship Bootcamp that I did with Nadia Sabrati. She then joined Branding University. So she followed to the brand of Mark Lalone first. Personal branding, y'all. This is what we're all about. Why did I choose Carol? She's crazy, but she's a special kind of crazy like me. That was kind of a joke, but kind of not. Hashtag, sorry, not sorry. Always working, creating content, helping, leading, training. Um, I have an announcement to make. Oh, geez, I better say this right now. Uh, I never really went through the ranks in Branding University. I was going to save that for August. However, those of you that have platinum partners under you and your, your income continues to stack onto itself, you reach ranks. You may not know it yet because the system's not showing it, but F1 is $1,000 cumulative. So if you've got like 300 platinum partners in four months, you're F1. It adds on top of, it, adds on top of itself. So it's not, doesn't need to be reoccurring. I won't get into that too, too much here, but Carol's been with us, I, I think since the beginning, maybe even in the old system, we'll address that in the interview for sure. But Carol's been F1 for a while. As a matter of fact, Carol's been F1 for a while. We talked about that, we joked about it. She was aware of it, but I wasn't. And I, there's a lot of you in the system that are F1s, by the way. I will make all the announcements in August when we launch 4.0, the new Branding University, the newest one with the brand new updated blogs, the capture pages, the 25 free courses. I can go on and on, but this is not supposed to be a promotion fest. But be there, August 20th, 8 p.m., mark it on your calendar. August 20th, 8 p.m., live, brandinguniversity.com slash webinar. Here we go, that was my pitch for the day, I promise. I gotta say this, guys, because Carol is working with me in another company as well. As you either know or do not know, I'm an entrepreneur and I have multiple income streams. She's working with me in another company. And not only has she ranked up three times, but she's earned a spot at the billionaire's table in May with David Gilmore. <clears throat> Where are you, David? Right here. David Gilmore, the founder of, oh, I'm pretty prepared today, it's pretty cool. The founder of Fiji Wire. I didn't earn that, guys. I didn't earn that, Carol earned it. Do you guys think I'm good? She beat me. But she's on my team, so I capitalize on that. Here we go. I'm going to predict that Carol is going to get her F10 award, the Red Flame Award in Branding University by the launch. Come on out, Carol. Come on out. Hey. <laughs> What's up? How you doing? Thanks for a wild introduction. That was great. Huh? I got my Fiji water too. <laughs> oh, wicked. Long yep. time no see. Long time no see, right? Yeah, right? <laughs> How you doing? I'm pumped up to have you on. Yeah, thank you. It's a pleasure and honor to be here. This is great. Yeah. Do you, uh, are you, are you okay with the unexpected? Yes, very much so. Yeah, just I'm going bring it on. 
here's the thing. We got. How did you like your week creating content? Was it? Did you enjoy hanging out with me? Oh yes, it was amazing. And like you said, yeah, we both ramble a lot. But isn't that a true sign of creative minds? Absolutely. There yeah. you go. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I was just fishing for compliments there. Don't you notice I always do that? Yes, I noticed. Oh, how was it working for me? As if someone's going to say it was horrible. <laughs> a couple of people said it was okay. It was, yeah. it, was, it was interesting. Don't you love that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was great, though, really. I mean, we had a lot of fun. Um, learned even more about each other and it's amazing how much we really can relate and I would be willing to bet we could almost finish each other's sentences yeah if we did that route actually I'm gonna give you a little hum a humble brag to yourself it's when you were doing a, a lot of the content you were doing you kind of go you go into Carol Carol mode it's like the script is not there and it's like oh. Carol mode and guys you you know this. Remember a couple of times when I said, I said, maybe we'll have to redo that again. And then I said, no, no, wait, no. You said what was needed to be said, but because you put in your own flow. And then once I reviewed the video, I'm like, holy crap! You just you, well, you do poetry. Yes, I do poetry too. That is why I kind of put two and two together because because uh. your content's kind of poetic. And yeah. your tonality, here, you're superb. You're superb in your delivery, absolutely. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I think it's a bit of not wanting to be like everyone else either. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I think too many people try to be the status quo and be exactly like someone else. Yeah. And you really can't do that. The best thing to do is to be you, who you are. Yeah, yeah. And it's so hard to get people to do that because they think that, oh no, they've got to be this particular way in order to do that or the other thing. No, always be yourself, no matter what you're doing. It works. Couldn't have said it better myself. Branding you university. It's perfect. Yep. That's exactly. That's why when you opened that, I said, that's, that's it. Are you, <laughs> are, you, are you excited about bringing a bunch of people on board? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I see the future. Yeah. Of this university and it's gonna be bigger than any of those others out there For even sure. do I dare say MLSP <laughs> it will put them yeah. to shame the and thing is yeah, we're, yeah. We're different market though like here, here's right. a, I'll, I'll address that just real quickly because I don't want to it's not this not at all a batch fest it's just we're in a different market our audience right. is just a larger audience MLSP is a it's just it's tailored it's marketed as mostly leads and they talk about helping your network marketing company a lot. We have a plumber that's coming out with a blog. We have a fitness trainer that's coming out with her own ebook. This will all be in August, a plumber, guys. Plumber is like, he is literally, he's selling his own plumbing advice and he's building his own plumbing audience. All kinds of systems do that, but we're just going to be, it's not, I just, I, I felt bad there when we said better than anyone. Well, we're let me correct better. that too. Yeah. I understand. You're right. Yeah. yeah. Where, where we will shine is that we actually more or less do take you by the hand and teach yeah. you what you have to have yeah. before you even go out, start generating and looking for leads. I mean, there's a base here that has yeah. been missing. Yeah. And that has been drastically needed. Yeah. Before leading up into something like that. Yeah. yeah. And I think that yes, that's where we shine because we actually do give you the nuts and bolts of what you need to start your business yeah. online. Yeah, the the 25 free courses in August is going to be a big deal cuz the may as well be paid courses. So it's that crazy. And the free, what, what do you think about the free affiliate program, Carol? People don't have to pay a monthly fee, and they, I mean, just paid last week. Again, over 500 people. It's right. Pretty, it's pretty crazy, right? That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, without That's, them having to pay a dime. Yeah. No monthly and still get all that value and all those free courses. It's, yeah. it's amazing. Well, this, it's has been, this has been a BU uh, pitch fest so far, hasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Talk about Carol. I'm going to start with 
I'm going to take a little bit of a backwards approach, okay? Instead of, say, tell us about Carol and going through your story sequentially from like when you were teeny weeny, I'm going to just, I'm going to throw you random questions. You okay with that? Sure. Go ahead. Yeah. Throw it at me. Uh, Because normally that's what people do, I find. In interviews, guys, they Mm -hmm. start out with, tell us about yourself. And they go, when I was young, I had a father and and they they do the sequential order. Right. But, and they save like the tips till the end, or I'm going to go into some of the guts right now. Because with me, 40 years in sales, I'm obsessed with sales. Yeah. There's probably many of you are too. And I know you, I know you can sell. So yeah. you, 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 like once you, you're on the phone with someone, it's probably over. Well, it's over. Oh. Yeah, many, many times in several positions I've had in sales. Um, I even got that from managers saying, would you please get on the phone and help this guy? But even other salespeople would come to me and say, would you come with me on this sale? Would you call this person for me? Yeah. It's just, I don't know. I'm just natural at it. it it's just a normal God-given instinct. Mm-hmm. Sales well, and me. Yeah. So, so let's talk about the uh, selling commercial ads. Mm-hmm. Was that for the, what was that about? How did, how did that work? That was the development through CBS, Media General owned them, that they hired me in to introduce IMD, and that was um, internet marketing development, to the TV station sales force, and they also owned the local newspaper sales force. Okay. So what I had to do is in, learn what I could about it to begin with and how to do it and then take it to both of those teams and okay. say, okay, now with your TV, you have to introduce the internet sales to your clients. Okay. And the newspaper had to do the same thing. Okay. However, then ultimately... I had to have each of those teams not only selling their newspaper, TV, and internet. Yeah. They also had to sell each other's. Oh, cool. And I'll tell you, newspaper and TV are arch enemies. Yeah? Yes. (laughs) They totally separate entities, didn't like each other. Okay. And all of a sudden, they had to work congruent with each other. Okay. And so I had to oversee both of those teams. Yeah. And they almost they kind of put me almost on a rotation because they didn't really understand what they were doing, how they were doing it. So yeah. I would, like I said, on a rotation basis, go out with them to help them introduce the internet portion of their sales with them <clears throat> and close those sales. Which I ultimately did, and within two years, we had the highest percentage of sales with, along the entire eastern seaboard that Media General owned, TV, newspaper, radio stations through. We're going to have some fun now creating some sales campaigns because we talk newspaper and TV, Carol. <laughs> like, we, we know that the internet, that uh, the, this guy is the future. You know, it's, it's a, all those ad dollars are going towards online. Yes. And that's what we do, online marketing through personal branding. Yeah. Yep. So this is why your experience, we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to make, make a lot of money together. Yeah, yeah. Been there, done that. Yes, can do it. <laughs> yeah, you, you've done pretty well financially in your career. Tell us about that a little bit. That I Say that again, I'm sorry. You, you, you've done quite well financially in your career, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. I've always managed to be top salesperson, yeah. outselling everyone else. Yeah. I was an independent salesperson for the newspaper at one point also. And at that time, they hired me in to – Bristol Motor Speedway is right here. And so the newspaper was putting together a big flyer about the race. Yeah. And the sales teams had to go out, obviously, and sell ads for it. Yeah. And then they hired me in to also go out and sell for it. Okay. I outsold their teams. Yeah. It's just 
something I know how to do. You know, I am even a photojournalist for one of the little newspapers at that time too. Yeah. And, you know, it's what I would do then, it would be, I'd go and find something interesting going on in the town. And I would always remember who it is, who, what, when, where, and how. Those are the five key things that in marketing alone too, that you need to answer about your client, what they have, where they come from, those five, who, what, when, where, and how. Uh, who, 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 what, what when, when where, where, and how. It's awesome. Yeah, those five things, you can cover those, you got it made. So uh, that's the that's a nugget. Let's, uh, I'd like to ask a question from my own knowledge. Okay. So you would go look for the, the, the things that were happening in the area, like mm -hmm. events and stuff? Or something, matter of fact, there was an ostrich farm in Blunt Bowl. Okay, and yeah. And I just happened upon it. Okay. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, for sure. I, I was shocked. I never knew that. So I went in and asked them, you know, who they were, where they came from, what, when, where, how are you doing this, the whole nine yards, took wow. down notes, took a bunch of pictures, went back to the paper, and he was like, wow, I've lived here all my life. I didn't know that. <laughs> that is fantastic. Yeah, it was pretty cool. And like big accidents or fires or yeah. anything of that sort that would happen to, you know, I'd go and I'd take all these awesome pictures, you know, give that information back to the editors and boom, there's your story right up. This is what, uh, this is, this is pretty awesome. Who, what, when, where, and how. Yes. Those are very, uh, precise. Yeah. And they're, 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 they're conversation, they're open-ended. So they talk back. Exactly. You can listen. You're you're okay. capturing. You're capturing. You're you're trapping them into talking more because when right. you, you talk more, you're in power. That's genius. Who, yeah. what, where, who, who, what, when, where, and how. Right. That's great because when uh, Lori Ann, one of our BEM members, was on quite a few, uh, maybe a month ago, or so, um, she she got a contract with a restaurant. I think she's just closing them down. Yeah, it's out. Uh, I know. I got to get with Lori because my talent for. Sale, outside yeah. sales and hers where you know, I didn't get hooked up and I just keep missing her I've been so busy in these past couple of weeks <laughs> but, yeah but the who yeah. when, where when and how is perfect for that like yes who are you what do you stand for uh, who, who are you what what do you stand for that just came out naturally they're right. great questions great stories yeah. okay and they're great for conducting an interview too absolutely absolutely guys I hope you're taking notes that's a great nugget yeah, it is. It's really good. If we did it the traditional way, we'd still be talking about Carol's miserable childhood now. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's <clears throat> one thing about me, too. I'm not conventional. I go around the regular rules. I don't like being the same as anybody else. I like my own flair, my own system. I, and I think it's because... It's just who I am inside, you know, yeah. different things will hit me at different points in time or something that will come up in my head and, you know, I have to ramble on about it or, well, I better not start rambling because I could, but yeah, <laughs> I don't like conventionality. Yeah. I'm going to, uh, I'm, I'm going to do this because if I don't do this, I'm going to, from now, I'm going to set it to an hour okay. <laughs> or 45, 45 minutes. I'm going to set it to from here. 40 minutes because we've probably been on for 10. So 30 minutes. So then I could get into the final question because I don't want to miss that. Okay. You're, you're a rambler, quite frankly. I know. <laughs> I do. Whenever we have Zoom meetings or whatever, it's like, okay, Carol, you need to be quiet now. You know, I just have to let somebody else talk. The, the, the thing is, you've got so many, you're, you're an onion with a lot of freaking layers. You are. Yeah. So it's like, I got to keep, I, I, I told you, I'm leading the dance today, right? Yes. Because we can go in. Uh, out of all people to keep things in line, I'm, not, I'm probably not the good guy for the job, but I'll try. You're doing all right. I'm going to, because I, I have a lot of dirt on you right here, and I'm like, uh oh. yeah, where do we, st where, where do we jump to next? I'm going to go with this one. 
<clears throat> we may, we we're gonna probably paddle back into your story throughout, okay? Okay. Like, because I'm I'm gonna throw them in as you, because I you have so many nuggets too, and so many experiences that we can learn from. Right. Right. The uh, I think hey guys, put it in the chat. Oh, by the way, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter Live, YouTube Live. I cannot see your comments, so I'm not ignoring you. But the webinar people. I can see your comments. We may be doing a little QA at the end, depending on how this goes. We'll see. <laughs> right? Yeah. Now, has any have any of you guys ever lost money online? Now, when I say lose money, let me be. Let me. We're going. We're going to talk about that a little bit because it's a common thing. I'll, everyone's out to get your money up front these days, and that's how. That's not how we roll. We go value first. The model is this: provides. Prove to someone you can help them. Demonstrate you can help someone by actually helping them. And then they're going to buy your stuff. So I'm going to say this. I'm going to talk about this bluntly. I'm going to say something bluntly right now. Not controversial at all. It's actually just true. People that say they've lost their money because they bought something, a course or a training or a coaching, and did not do the work, you didn't lose your money. You just didn't do the work. So with that out of the way, you lost a few bucks online, Carol? Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, and actually, the 3000 I lost was prior to really knowing anything much about the Internet. Okay. I actually lost another $8,000 right after my husband, my father, and my sister all died. And I went through this panic mode. Your uh, I'm sorry to hear that. Your husband, who your husband, your husband, your father, your sister, all died. Mm -hmm. My dad died January 1, 2014. My sister about two and a half, three weeks later. What? And then my husband started getting not feeling too good and getting ill mid February, and he just we he went downhill and he passed the end of December. He wound up with congestive heart failure, his vascular. Holy shit. All three in one year? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. That's 2014? Yeah. And I did about lose it because I just, there was like no one left. You know, my moms, my grandparents, my aunts, uncles, there just wasn't anyone left. And I had one stepfather actually left, you know, my mom's third husband. <laughs> but, um, he just passed this past February. So now there is literally no one behind me. My head's next on the chopping block, and I don't plan on going anywhere soon. Hmm. No, no, no. Um, well, that's pretty crazy. So 2014, <clears throat> no, I, I don't mean to bring that up, but when did you, uh, we were 2000, you, I, I think you were in Branding, you were in Branding University since like the, when we were like beta one, right? Beta right. One, weren't you? Right. <clears throat> so we're going back three years, right? At least, yeah. Wow. So almost a year after you lost uh, your, you lost those people, right? Mm hmm So it's during that next year that, yeah, I lost a lot of money on the internet. You know, I was, I was in a different world. I mean, I. <laughs> I didn't know to stand up, sit down, what to do, where to go. I mean, I was totally losing it. But I did get help, got myself straightened out, yeah. went back to the Internet again, wasn't going to spend that kind of money anymore. Yeah. And I just kind of took my life and wrapped it up and figured out what I needed to do. And then I found you. It's been blooming ever since. Yeah, That's right. The right path, and I'm happy, and I'm good, and moving along, and things are looking a lot brighter. Good. How did you? Find I owe you? that to you, Mark. Thank you. Oh, th well, thank you. Well, now you pretty much have been my savior. Wow. Well, did you guys hear that? Did you want to repeat that? <laughs> You're my savior. <laughs> How about my second savior? Yeah, listen, uh, I want lightning to strike. <laughs> it's, it's, it's time for. Well, now now you're going to get paid for it. You're gonna get pay it's payback time. Yeah, it's it's, it's reaping time. Um, how did you find me, if I may ask? 
you know, I don't even rightly remember too much. I think it was it was either that Twitter thing or that little thing you put on your phone or something. I can't remember what that was called. You, which one came first? The thing you... Oh, you mean the beacon. Yes, that's it. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, you found me. You saw me do the... That's when you started yes. following me? Okay, that's a while back. Yeah, it was either that or Twitter. I couldn't, can't remember. Yeah, okay. dates, times, places, they get screwed up in my head. And did I just pop up in your timeline some one day? Uh, yeah, I just, I don't, yeah, you just popped up somewhere and, you know, and I started listening to you and all that you were doing and I never left. Cool. Thank you. Cool. Yeah, well, you're welcome. Now, now you're, now you're, now you're one of me. Yeah, I know. A mini you. <laughs> A mini me. I got 10 mini me's now, guys. That's right. Yep. <laughs> 10 little Indian jeeves. But but all kidding aside, this is a this is a fun this is going to be a fun fun journey for all of you guys because it's there's a lot of students in Brandon University now and we haven't even really marketed to it so it's going to be interesting. Right, that is awesome. So, um, do you with, see this is tricky uh, without saying any names? Could you, is that possible without saying any company names or program names or leader names? Sure. What kind of stuff did you lose money on? Was it training or was it uh, was it like training or coaching? most of it was trainings, Mark. Okay. okay. And the obscene amount of money that they'd want, but yeah. promising you glory at the end, yeah. which never comes. It's just a way to get your money. And then, of course, they won't refund it. Just scams. Yeah. Big time scams out there. Yeah. You've got to be careful. Yeah. And people yeah. who are doing that sort of thing or involved in those type of things, yeah. search around, ask questions, find someone to talk <laughs> to about it first. Mm -hmm. And not just one person. But get several different opinions from different people from different walks of life who are doing something online. Yeah. Be careful because they're going to try to tell you, sell you their stuff. But educate yourself first. Come to Branding U University. We That's will it. help you. That's it. I'm going to say a couple of things uh, over there in my head. I didn't even write them down. Uh, what I like to do, guys, uh, okay, do you mind if I throw in a little tip? Sure. For when, when I purchase courses, I... I rarely purchase a course unless the person that I'm purchasing the course from gave me something for free that worked. Right. I, if, if something that they're doing on YouTube, I try and it works, my credit card is out. It's out. I'm like, that little free thing worked? Okay, well, then I'm buying his course. Right. And this is, this is why in Branding University, we've got all those free courses all there. It's so that you guys get little bit of taste you get free, you get a free taste pretty much but a lot of it so that's what I would say guys and the other thing I want to personally say from well, yeah because I have created a lot of these courses is that I will never release a course except maybe there's a few exceptions such as Alexa Alexa stop because that that I haven't done to get results so if I'm going to teach something in the university or a, or a professor will teach something in the university, I have to make sure it works. Except for Alexa. Alexa, stop! Because that was more forward thinking, right? So it was something that I had to kind of guess on. Okay. Awesome. How do you, uh, how do you feel about being F5, uh, an F5 leader next month in... Uh, in May, you're going to roll over as an L. You're going to roll over. Roll I'm over. not rolling over. <laughs> I'm rolling up. <laughs> yeah. You, so you'll be in F5 in May. May, April, May, uh, April, May, June, July. Do you want to publicly claim F10 on this webinar so that you have to do it? Sure. Why not? There you go. Okay. F10 yeah. by August 20th. There you go. That's the deal. There you go. If you have it, because well, I'm going to make the announcements of all the yeah. F10s, and you'll have your, I'm going to try and ship you your award in advance. Okay, and great. 
Yeah. Great. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yes. Awesome. No, Let's thank do you. It. Thank you. So are you going to, uh, oh, let's talk about this. This is, for, are you okay with this, uh, this way the interviews? Yeah, work? it's fine. Yes. It's great. <laughs> Love we're, it. getting, we're getting a lot of nuggets. Yeah. We, there's a lot of things that I've been through and I know it's really hard to, yeah. If you do the story thing, I'd be here for an hour and a half. Yeah. We'll dig in though. Cause there are things I do want to touch on about okay. you. All right. I don't want to say about what, cause you're going to jump in and take over. <laughs> yeah. I want to talk about photography as well in, in a second. Okay. Before I want to talk about how the heck did you, uh, you the billionaire's table? Are you like? Are you going to go to that? Are you able to go to that? I've been wanting to go. Yeah. Um, I don't know that I physically can or should just yet at the moment. Okay. Cause of a physical ailment. Hold on, I need to close my window here. Curtain blowing. Yeah. Um, you know, they found something odd with my heart and oh, yeah. they want me to go through cardiac rehab, and that's going to be right smack in the middle of that. Really? Yeah, so I'm not sure. I have an appointment with the cardiac department on Tuesday. And I'm going to discuss it with them at that time further. Okay. Um, I mean, it's an awesome opportunity, and I really, really, really want to go. Yeah. But I need clearance. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. If you uh, in six months when the next event for that specific company is going, right? You'll have a date because I'm going to be there too. So we'll just go next time. Okay. Take care of yourself. Oh, that would, you sure? Would, yeah, I wouldn't even worry about it. If it's a hard thing, because I, yeah, I, I don't, I, I try not to play. Well, I don't play with that. So I yeah. would say just skip. It's just, it's just a billionaire. We'll be a billionaire. Just, yeah, it's just a billionaire. <laughs> Isn't it funny, Carol? Isn't it funny how just because they're a billionaire, they're it's like it's almost like no one even knows his name is David Gilmore anymore. It's just like that's the billionaire. So, so you <laughs> right. Know. We're gonna get there, Mark. Uh, I'll speak for yourself. I know I am. I am too. I mean, it's going to happen. My father was a multimillionaire, and I'm going to yeah. have to outdo him. Yeah, you got to. That's my challenge to myself. That's the rule. You got to yep. outdo him. Yep. Yeah, he did very well. Eh, your dad? Yeah, he did. He, he had the he had the engineering and uh, real estate business. Yeah, he was in the top three percent engineers, real estate development business. The top three percent in demand for services yeah. worldwide. Really? Yeah. There was even a time he was working in um, Indonesia. In Syrian Jaya was the island. But anyway, he got a call from the son of Ross Perot. No way. Yeah. And so they flew him back to Texas because they wanted dad's help in some land investment that they were working on. Okay. And they wanted dad, they wanted to hire him for development of it. And <laughs> I love this. My father turned him down. <laughs> what? He turned them down because oh. he didn't like where their plan and what they were going to be doing with the land. Really? My father was very much a naturalist and believed in working with surroundings of the land and making them pretty and benefit okay. everyone concerned. Matter of fact, that just reminded me, my father had been, and this was, oh gosh, I'd have to look it up, probably 20 years or more ago, but he actually was invited to NASA. And he talked to a team of 40 scientists mm -hmm. about what and how would be the best way to develop the moon and Mars for human development. In other words, a town situation, what it would take to maintain and satisfy and make people happy living on the moon or on Mars. So your dad was a very highly respected man in the family. Oh yes, yes. And, and, and that's, that's who you worked for at 16 years old as a receptionist? Yes. Tell me about that. What did you that? Tell me. Tell me about that little little girl there working a receptionist. <laughs> well, number one, I mean, I was thrilled to work for my father. 
But at the same time, it was like, I didn't want a job from his coattails. Sure. I, I couldn't do it. Yeah. It, it was just something in me that said, I'm not going to be handed down work mm -hmm. because he always taught me, you've got to earn your way. Yeah. Okay. You've got to get, do it to be rewarded. Yeah. So as much as, you know, I enjoyed the receptionist job. Everybody loved me. You know, they raved about my phone conversations and how I handled everyone. And yeah. dad was so proud and so forth and so on. But, you know, they said, are you going to stay with us? And it's like all the time I was asked that. And I couldn't. I just couldn't. Because my father taught me if I wanted something, go out, get it, yeah, earn it yeah. yourself. For sure. Yeah, it's like. Yeah. Um, form. You were, uh, <clears throat> not to get into more miserable topics, but. That's okay. Your, your heart thing. Um, when you were talking about. We, we, we had a laugh on this. I don't know if, it's, if, if this is appropriate, but I'm going to say it anyways. When you were saying it, when Honeywell sent you to create and problem solving, uh, managing interpersonal skills and stress management, how'd you yeah. do that? Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. <laughs> Not real good. Actually, I did very good because I understood it all. But we all had to do like this little scenario of ourselves and it go through a question and answer on paper thing. Okay. And then we switched them all around. So we all graded each other's and turned them into the teacher. And he took a few minutes to go through them. There's about half a dozen of us or so. And then what he did, I guess he was shuffling around and put them in order and he did a little chart, you know, on a chalkboard. And it was a chalkboard back there, not whiteboard. But yeah, <laughs> anyway, yeah. um, and when he got to about three quarters of the way up and, you know, he put a little tick for our different names, and mine wasn't there. So I raised my I said, what did I do on mine? I don't see mine up there. He says, Carol, we don't have a number high enough to put yours up here. Your stress levels were extraordinary. And it's because of so much I had been through as a kid, even at that time. Are, are you, are you, are you coping with stress issues now, today? Also, still, I mean? I do, yeah. Um, it's my own personal barrier because it's just, it's hard to let go of things from the past when the people from the past who these things revolve around are now deceased, mm -hmm. namely my sister. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I darn near lost my life when I was a kid. Yeah. Got pushed off the bed, hit my head, stopped breathing. Um, but it was my father who eventually got a hold of me, and my mom who found me laying on the floor, and my dad eventually finding me, starting the CPR, getting emergency people there. You know, he quite literally saved my life. But it was hard growing up. I had to live in fear for my life for my entire childhood because my sister wanted me dead. Okay, now it's getting dark. We may have to switch. Now, to now it's getting dark. I have to add this. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm going to let it go a little longer. I'm going to let it go. Two seconds. This is easy. My, my sister is trying to kill me. I'm like, okay. Yeah. No, no, no. So what I learned hurt? from that was how to survive. There you go. And even all those survival attitudes, responses that I built within myself absolutely. today absolutely. actually helps me when I'm confronted with something hard. Absolutely. You know, it absolutely. works. So that's why I wanted to wait a minute. There's more to it that actually there was a positive that came out of it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. No matter what kind of brick wall you hit against. If you really take it sincerely and look at it objectively and find out what really happened and what did you learn from it, what kind of wisdom did you get from it? Yeah. It's yeah. amazing what you'll find out about yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I believe uh, in that wholeheartedly. What does Joel Olstein say? Our, the hardships shouldn't make us bitter. They should make us better. better. Beautiful. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You're... you're, you're you're a tough cookie. You're, you, yep. you don't need to be too much of tough cookies where, with where we are now. 
we kind of no, we do. We, we do. I shouldn't. Say. There are times you need to be. There yeah, you need to be. And unfortunately, I grew up in Northern Jersey. <laughs> okay. What so I mean? have that Yankee backbone. Okay. Is that a uh, is that a tough place? Northern. Oh uh, yes. You don't walk down the street and talk to anybody or smile or anything. Oh, yeah? Really? Yeah. It's like okay. being in the Port Authority. You you mind your own business. You do your thing and go. Okay. okay. I'm a, uh, I'm a, uh, I'm, I'm Canadian. I've never left the country. I've never oh, been to this. Really? Oh, wow. yeah, the, the, the most I know about the United States of America is, see the time zones up there? Yes, that's, that's it. Much, that's as much as I know. I drove the entire country. You did? Yes, I was a professional driver for eight years. A race car driver? Oh, I wish. I was a track photographer. I was there taking pictures of the races. But no, my husband, before he died, what we did for the last eight years of his life is we had uh, become professional drivers where we had our CDLs. Okay. And we'd both pick up bobtails, boxcars, utility trucks, okay. class A motorhomes. I mean, you name it, anything big like that. We would pick up from the manufacturer and drive it to the dealership and then we well we always towed our car so yeah. and we always took two so we we're always double dipping yeah the pay on it gotcha. and after that we would oh i don't know, go see something you know the only place i haven't seen is the grand canyon that really bothers me but mount rushmore you know the big crater uh, we went panning for gold yeah i mean we did so many things very cool it was awesome. It was like being retired and getting paid for it. Yeah, yeah. I loved it. You learn a lot from the travels, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and different kinds of people in different places in the country. And I'll say I think Tennessee is the best place to live. Yeah. Ty, Ty Lopez actually says that uh, one, of the, one of his greatest contributors to his entrepreneurial creativity is just travel. Just yeah. travel. Yep. Like, really? Yep. So, I don't travel, but I, this is my first year. I probably will. Yeah, I can, I can picture that. I can imagine how cool it would be to see different places. And yeah. Well, and you also run into so many different people in different ways and yeah. walks of life that it just really opens your eyes more. Yeah. Yeah. To the world around you that you're living in. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've even we'll... gone to Austria. I used to ski. You used to ski as well? Mm -hmm. No way. Yeah. I'm a skier. I went to Austria twice. Went to Kitzbühel and then I went to Bagestein. Hmm. Beautiful country. Oh my gosh, Mark. It's breathtaking. It is just absolutely gorgeous over there. Really, eh? Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. I want to um I, I want to talk about a little bit about the Queen. Can we talk about the Queen of Nashville? What is it? Oh shoot. Yeah. The <laughs> care queen. Of the daycare queen of Nashville? Uh, I didn't even know it. <laughs> the queen. Let's talk about the queen. No, it's pretty impressive because <clears throat> from what I understand, that was a Sam Gen Enterprises, right? That was a, yeah. you were raising money for schools? Right. Schools, daycares, you know, football teams, choirs, whoever, you know, kids would, at least all in my area, and I would imagine for the majority of you know, people, but I don't think you've heard of it up there. People in the States, the schools will um, send kids home with brochures or boxes of candy or something oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. to raise funds for whatever their team, group, or school is needing. Is it kind of like Girl Scout cookies? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so you would have to, it was kind of a sales job, right? Because you had to approach daycares, right? Oh yes. Would yep. you go in? Would you go in cold? Yes. Like knock, knock, knock. Always cold. Yes. Beautiful. Now you're talking my language. So door to door, right? Yes. <laughs> and they called you the queen because the daycare queen because you were just closing so many. Companies. Yes. Yes. None of the other uh, outside fundraising companies or national fund companies could get a hold of one. Okay, we. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to just jump in because I'm not gonna jump in. I'm gonna jump in with more questions because, folks, sales are sales. I love sales. So, would you mind if I uh, 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 probe a little bit? 
Sure, sure, go ahead. Because so, I'm curious. I love door. I love the cold calls and I love yeah. door to doors. I, I love those things because people are not willing to do them. So if you're willing to do the hard things, you're like, and you get good at the hard things, you like dominate that market because no one else will do it. So I know, right? <laughs> absolutely. So what would you do? Would you, if we look at like, there's the daycare. Here's Carol. What, would you mind sharing how you would do do your thing? Would you go well, first the- off, yeah. I would try to get them from between like twelve and two two thirty. Yeah. Okay. So you That's know fine. the kids are finishing eating or just getting put down something yeah. so it's quiet time. Beautiful, smart. See. Yep. This is yep. strategy. Okay, <laughs> exactly. I'm, I'm taking notes. Okay. Yeah. So I'd walk in the door, ask to speak to the director. If she wasn't there, you know, if I had one, she'd be back, and I'd, you know, try to re- reschedule. But um, as long as she was there, and most times during that quiet time, she's there. And um, I just asked her. I'd go in. I'd introduce myself. My name's Carol. And I was. I have a question for you. I was wondering something. And they'd say, "What?" I said, "Do you need any money for your daycare? To buy any kind of equipment or anything?" And <laughs> Every woman, one of them will say yes. Yeah. You know, especially yeah. the privately owned ones. Those were huge for saying yeah. yes. I said, well, what if I could get you that money? Yeah. He said, well, yeah. I'm not interested in any loans or anything. I said, nope, free money. There you go. No loans, nothing. There you go. So, well, have a seat. <laughs> so I would there you go. start talking to her about the program and what we'd have to do and how to do it and blah, blah, blah. And they're signing on the dotted line. Okay, guess what? I took notes. And I'm gonna, can I reiterate what you just did? Sure. <clears throat> Guys, this is uh, this is not luck. This is real. Like, this is a strategy that you got it to work. Then I was just about going to the next one, going to the next, and dominating your space. Timing. Carol looked at time. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I know I'm right. I was, I was listening. Timing. She made sure it was a good time to show up. Getting by the gatekeeper. If the person, the decision maker wasn't available, she'd come back when it was, or she was, right? Mm -hmm. Number three, selling herself. She'd do her introduction. Number four, asking questions with what's in it for them. And number five, she would solve their problem. So it's it's amazing. It's amazing. Because it's like some people... The amateur listening would just say, oh, I'm not down, I'm a prof- I am a professional salesperson. I challenge anyone. I'm just saying, I challenge you. Let's have a little contest one day for cold calls. Deal? Okay. <laughs> we'll, do it, we'll, do it with, we'll do it with cold market leads. I can okay. get this. Well, I just generate, I put an ad. We should have a fun contest about that. With Yeah, that would be awesome. I'll, I'll get a realtor lists because realtors need to brand themselves. Yeah. Like salespeople. We'll they get do. a list of realtors. We'll get... Who, hey guys in the chat, if you guys would like to partake in a boot camp of this fashion, put it in the chat. And then we're gonna have a prize, a cash prize. We're gonna have all the same amount of cold leads. We're gonna try and sell them on Branding University. Would you be up for that, Carol? Yeah, that'd be great. But I'll tell you one thing about me yeah. that I've told every superior I've had in any kind of sales thing that I've been involved in. Yeah, yeah. They would all do that. They'd say, we're going to do this, that, the other thing, and this is what you're going to get if you sell the most. Mm-hmm. It goes out of my head. That does nothing for me. Mm-hmm. Nothing. Which I know everybody says, well, that doesn't make any sense. That's weird. And it's not because to me, I mean, everything I have done, everything yeah. I've worked for, I've worked hard for, and I've gotten yeah. because of working hard. Yeah. That little thing dad put in my head, you want something, you have to work for it and get it. You work hard, you do it right, you'll be rewarded. Yeah. So for me, it's always, uh-oh, <laughs> or babbling. Oh. It's always, you know, if I even with a challenge, well, I'm going to do my best. I'm going to go out there, I'm going to do what I can do, I'm going to put my all into it. And if I do my best, then I should be good. If I don't, then someone else will. That's but it perfect. isn't it isn't that tool. I mean, it could be a dollar, you know. Yeah, that okay. Matter. That makes sense. What's in here that motivates me? Yeah, that, that makes sense. 
It's yeah. like when a, a, a big professional sports coach will say, it doesn't matter if you win or not as much as if you give it your 100%. If right, you, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and people don't necessarily get that. Yeah, well, guess what that is? I know we're about out of time. That's our that's our babble meter. <laughs> we wouldn't we wouldn't we weren't stopping. So yeah. I'm gonna, can I ask you some direct questions now? Sure. Uh, what are they? <laughs> for the for for the users, if if you had to, don't worry, we're gonna do more of this stuff. You got too much to offer. We're gonna get you in the. We're gonna we're gonna work something out. We just, I, I promised myself that I would stop doing these three hour webinars. This doesn't happen, especially when you have babblers all around you. Oh geez, we could go on all day. Yeah. What's your biggest, okay, this is a good one. If you had to pick one in this industry, this online space, what would be your biggest industry takeaway so far? <sighs> biggest industry takeaway. I would say, why, that anything is obtainable. Okay. You know, you can do whatever you want as long as you understand what is needed to get there. There you go. As long as you do the work required, yeah. get to where you want to do, to do, <laughs> get to where you want to go, yeah. to do what you want to do. Mm -hmm work it'd be the work yeah. you've got to do the work to get anywhere you know that's just all part of me it's it is part of this industry it is part of any work ethic or any job that you have yeah. and you can get anywhere as long yeah. as you're willing to do the work yeah you said the two things there I just picked well, I picked up on it because I'm listening because I'm listening, everyone. Are you guys asleep? Hold on. <laughs> well, you said work and uh, know what to do to get there. That I find that interesting because that's what I always say. I go, if hey, you can get anything, all you need to do is figure out what it takes to get there, and that's resourcefulness. Education. So, yeah, there you go. Continued education. There you go. And not that you're going out there to buy a course from someone. It's, this is your own personal education yeah, yeah that absolutely. you can find on youtube or anywhere about anything that you're looking for absolutely and it's funny how when i when i was recording you before we started when you didn't know we were recording there before we put up our pictures uh-huh you were saying how all the culmination of your experiences in life led you they, they come in handy don't they yeah yeah but it was, it was just so kind of unique though that everything that i had yeah. gone through it all, every single bit of it, yeah. has formed me into who I am now to do what I really want to do now. And this, can. Is, what, this is what you're supposed to do, by the way, like where we're going forward, because you're yeah. going to have a voice. You're going right. to be people by the hand. And a lot of people, they just need to talk to someone to figure right. out the stuff. Like exactly. a capture page can only do so much. So right. videos, they need to talk to someone like how do I set this up or I don't believe in myself and when you let them know you, you know you, you know exactly what I'm saying yes I do yeah okay I may I may throw you another 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 that was, thank you for that answer I completely agree um, what advice would you give new people in this business just starting out it kind of leads back to the same thing, your work. But what you've got to do is you have to start from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And one of the most important things for you to start with yeah. is something you can get free through one of our courses. There it's you your go. story is your money. You, go. you yeah. have got to put down in writing who you are from the beginning, there you go. what your life has been like. There you go. Because until you have those things planted in front of you, yeah. how are you going to be able to instantly relate to someone else about there something you've gone through? There it is. There it is. Oh. There, there you have it. That's yep. it. That's, that, that's it. That's yep. what I would say, too. Uh, take that course and do that course. And you just, there's a lot of self-discovery in that process, too, isn't there? Don't you find it? Exactly. Which, again, gives you that 
ability to relate to others because your story, your life is fresh on your mind. Yeah. And as you're going through that, maybe you hit something that hurt, you instantly have the ability then, because you're so far away from it now, because it was so long ago, yeah. to look at it objectively and, and realize what you learned from it. Yeah. Hey, and listen, guys, the, your story, like if you look at, for those of, who took the course, put it in the chat. Your story is your money. We go through defining moments and the structure of it. And every defining moment is going to relate to a different demographic in, the, in different portions of your audience. It's going to connect on so many levels. And I know this is running on Instagram as well. And there's a lot of grammars that are not in Branding University. So what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to contact Carol. Contact Carol. Same on Twitter Live. What are you guys doing? You're not even, you're not even with us. This is where we get the best streams. Facebook is not that we haven't really gone too big on Facebook, but same thing. Contact Carol. Okay, guys, we're going to get, we're going to get into your contact info just about now. That was a perfect, thank you for that answer. I agree. You're welcome. Um, I wish we could go on for three hours, but we can't. Yeah, because I didn't tell them that I danced in Dollywood or on the Grand Old Opry or and published in books. Or <laughs> Here you go. So you say a bunch of things in 30 seconds. A bunch of a bunch of things we don't know about you. Hey, hold on. I'll give you a minute. And right oh, gosh. We, you really didn't have to do that. I'm, I'm but, yeah, I, I used to dance. I was on the Grand Old, Grand Old Opry. I also danced in Dollywood. Uh, it was clogging. I Even uh -huh. like young adult, I was ballet. I was in many ballet musicals. Really? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I didn't tell you about that one. And my photography. I mean, I was a track photography for uh, Bristol Motor Speedway, the Thunder Valley, for like three, four years. Cool. And I have got albums galore. I got like about 17 big, huge albums full of pictures from the track. <laughs> the camera. I want to see a picture. Wow. Tons of wow, pictures. Wow, cool. You know, burnouts and everything else and uh, the big races. And I've also have pictures in Bristol Motor Speedway. Very the history cool. of from working the round track. So that's uh, what that's why when I said, "Were you a race car driver?" You you were turned on. You're like, "Oh, I wish." You I had to live in the track though. There you go. I was able to get. I was given the opportunity to get in there and drive around <laughs> real fast. And really? my, yeah, I'll okay. tell you, you, come up to those curves and you automatically want to turn the wheel. You don't. I mean, by the third time I tried it, you know, the guy who was with me was ready to grab that wheel. I said, I think I'm okay. And I didn't touch it because it automatically turns itself. Yeah. It was you so what, weird. You know how I said, I'll give you a minute. I put it, instead of putting 60 seconds, I put 60 minutes. We were oh, oh, good. Okay. I can talk some more. <laughs> well, Carol, guess what we're going to do now? We're going to get your contact info because people are waiting for it. Okay. So you can help them out, get them plugged in. <coughs> Excuse me. But uh, guess what we're going to run right now? Yeah, we're going to say goodbye, but guess what we're about to run? Oh, those 10 things when you're in a rut. 10 ways to get out of a business rut by Carol Brown Earl. You haven't seen your edited copies. No, I haven't. Are you excited or are you nervous? A little bit of both. A little bit of both. <laughs> so, let's, so let's do this now. Um, okay. CarolEarl.com, correct? Yes. That's a great domain yeah. name. How'd you pick that? How'd you grab that? Blocky was available. Yeah. I also have um, one that's envisioning utopia with carol.com. Okay. Okay. And do they both go to the same place? No. One goes more directly to Branding University's blog okay. that I have. Okay. And the other has lots of things in it, along with my blog. Okay, is there a link from your Branding University blog to Envisioning Utopia? Actually, I don't think I have that on there. Okay, okay. I should put that on there. Uh -huh. I never thought about that. The, the reason I'm saying, do you have social media handles on your Yes, Utopia? yes, I do. I have my social media handles are on the blog on carolearl.com for Branding because, University. Because, uh, quite frankly, Facebook, is isn't that the best way to just ping you and get you yes you yes check your you, f you check your filtered messages eh carol all the time okay <laughs> i don't necessarily get to all of them but i do <laughs> okay 
You, please get to them in the next week. While this okay. week thing gets yeah, done. and that would be facebook.com slash Carol Earl. Beautiful. Easy. Carol Earl, just like it sounds. E-A-R-L, correct? Yes, correct. Right. Carol, and, uh, one R, one L. Right. <laughs> Very simple. And uh, Twitter is, you know, hashtag Ask Carol Earl. Mm. And cool. Instagram is a little different, though. That one is here, the number two, brand you. Okay, cool. So. CarolEarl.com, all the handles are there. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there are circles. You know, because people, I, I find fun. people could go to Twitter or Instagram. When I do that, when I drop a bunch of things, people are like, what did he say again? But if I just say my URL to my blog with all the all the social media icons is just super easy. Yeah. Well, we have it. We have it all. Yeah. Yeah. That those blogs and the development that you're doing with them and even increasing them yeah. with more things that we can use on them is just outstanding. Mark, it's amazing what you're doing. I want to thank you. It'd be awesome. I don't do the programming though. That's the Boyd. That's the Boyd up there. That's Larry. Yeah. That's Larry. <laughs> He's the boss. He's the, he's the boss. He the yeah. boss. Right. <laughs> So that went by quick. We're done today. Yeah. You ready to say goodbye to the people watching? Sure. <laughs> okay. Bye, everybody. We're going to plug in. Bye, guys. You. Thanks for tuning in. Yell at me Bye anytime. Now. Thanks. Bye. Hey, guys. I'm Carol Brown Earl from Bristol, Virginia. Do you ever feel like you're in a business rut and you just can't move forward? Well, I'm going to share with you 10 strategies to instantly get you out of those business ruts. Number one, try to figure out why you're in a business rut. I spent a lot of time trying to figure out why I was having ruts, a lot. And I finally learned that if you ask yourself one thing, you can get clarity on it. Just simply ask yourself, why are you in a rut? And you'd be amazed. It might take, it could take an hour, it could take two days. You don't know, but if you keep that in your foremind, why am I in a rut? Trust me, the answer will come to you. It always has for me. Let me give you an example of something I went through. I had lost a lot of family members in one year. I was devastated. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do about money. I was totally lost. I was stuck in such a rut. I didn't know what to do business-wise. I didn't know which way to turn. So I figured the only thing I could do was to turn to the internet. People make money on the internet. So this is what I attempted to do. I went through months and months of trials, tribulations, spending an obscene amount of money trying to figure out how to go about making money on the internet. And I was so stuck, I couldn't get anywhere. You know, I just hung it up one day and maybe four or five days later I went back with a clean mindset. And I happened to find someone online that was teaching everything I felt from my gut that I needed. And that was Mark Malone. And I'll tell you what, he has been such a blessing. He has brought me to where I am today. God bless him. I don't know what I would have done without him. But all that took was just for me letting go for a little while. You know, give it to God or however you want to do it. For me, it was just clarifying and clearing my mind for a few days. And lo and behold, the answer showed up. So this is what I'm saying. You get in a rut and you really have no idea where to go, where to start, who to turn to. Let go of it. Leave it be for a day or two, or how much time you think you might need. When you go to bed at night, forget about it. Your mind will figure it out for you. And the next day, you'd surprise how wonderful you will feel because you'll be out of that business rut and you'll have the answer that you need to continue on. Number two, what is your big reason for why you're working so hard. Let me tell you what mine is. I've had a hard life, very complicated, too much to go into, but it's left me with not having the relationship I would like to have with all my kids. 
and I've got five. So I work really, really hard so that I can get to the point where I'm able to, one weekend, pick up the phone, book a flight, fly to Colorado, California, Oklahoma, wherever, to see my kids and my grandkids. That's my why. And I never, ever stop remembering that. So when you're in a business rut, turn around and ask yourself, why? Why is it you're working as hard as you are? And you're sure, absolutely sure, you will bust out of that rut. Number three, remember where you came from. When I first came online, I was so totally lost. I've had 30 years of sales experience, being top salesman in every sales position or contract that I would take on. So when I hit the internet, I was totally lost. It was so different. The normal sales things that you use on the streets is so very different for how you produce sales on the internet. But I'll tell you what, through determination <laughs> and time, I conquered each one of those issues, how to market, how to create a blog, how to post on social media, all these little things finally became glued together for me. And I understood now what I need to do. And it's just done nothing but blossom for me. So really everything, it's just a matter of knowing those little steps changing your ideals a little bit. So when I look back and realize how much I did not know compared to what I know now, it just amazes me and it pulls me out of that rut. And I know you could do the same thing as well. So when you think about how far you've come, you will for sure be able to get yourself out of that rut as well. Number four, move, change, or improve small things around you. For example, maybe on your Facebook page, you want to update some colors or pictures on there. Or if you have a blog, you know, update there too, some fresh information. Find a good book that you'd like to read and enjoy that. Make a new video. Small things like this really make a difference in your attitude and how you approach your business. Some of the things that I like to do is, I actually like to clean up my office a little bit because I'm always doing so much at once that it really needs attention a couple few times a week. I also like to go outside. I love to go outside in my flower gardens and I love to go and buy flowers, fresh flowers in the house. These things always make me feel a lot better. So if you apply this strategy, I guarantee it'll get you out of a rut. Number five, introduce or acquire new things. Go online, find new people. You should do this every day anyway. Constantly be adding people to your pages, to who you are. Go and check out some of the other entrepreneurs online. Learn something new. Educate yourself. You know, go listen to someone that you can really be educated with. There's plenty of them on YouTube. It's like what I do. When I want to acquire new things, I go after a lot of new people. You know, I want to build my base and I want to be sure I have a certain amount of particular types of people. And I have a particular few people, mentors, seven, eight figure mentors that I follow religiously too. And I get a lot of educational information from them. So if you introduce and acquire new knowledge for yourself, you're sure to break out of the business rut. Number six, take a holiday, take a break, go do something. A lot of people will do things such as go out to a movie, go over to a friend's house, sit, chat over a cup of coffee, go for a bike ride or just a drive around the countryside. 
it's amazing how relieving that those simple little things will be. For me, I suppose I feel blessed if I can take like a day, maybe two off a couple times a month. And what I like to do during those times is, I know this is kind of strange, but I actually like to dive into my household things, maybe rearrange things there, clean up a closet. <laughs> I know it's strange, but I like doing things for me that improve my surroundings. And occasionally I do like to go to dinner too. So if you apply these small strategies, taking a break, have a holiday, clear your mind somehow, you for sure will get out of that rut. Number seven, goof off. Yes, goof off. Go out, run around your house if you want to, but just goof off. Go play a game of tennis. You know, go play some football with your friends. Go do something fun and exhilarating. The type of things I like to do is the photographer and me, because I'm actually by trade a photographer, I love to go out and take pictures of things, just oddball things that nobody would ever dream of taking. And I just get so much enjoyment out of that. I'd love to be able to run, go out and take a run, but I'm not quite there yet healthy enough, but I'm working on it. The point is, if you go out and just do some goofy things for yourself, you will get out of that rut. It'll clear your mind. Number eight, find a confidant, someone who you believe in, that you can trust in, that you can pour your heart out to. It could be a sister or a brother, a mother, your father, an aunt, an uncle, your best friend, whoever you can relate to. Find this one person that you can go to with all your issues because you will have a lot. Building a business is not easy. We all need to have a confidant. In my situation, all my parents, uncles, aunts, they're all gone. Even my oldest sister is gone. My husbands I've lost too, they're gone. But I do have one daughter out of the five whom I adopted and she's 33. And I am so blessed to have her. She lives with me. She is my confidant. She and I can talk about anything. So when I get aggravated or frustrated or don't know what to do about something, I can rant and rave with her till the cows come home. So if you just find that one person, just one, as a confidant who you can actually relate to and speak your issues to, you're guaranteed to get out of that business run. Number nine. Get rid of things that make you nuts, things that drive you crazy. Whether it's the business part in you have sitting to the right of you, or whether it's the people in traffic when you're driving to work, or if it's your microphone or your camera on your computer that's driving you crazy, anything, your surroundings of things that you don't like, get rid of them, change them, address the issue. You'll feel so much better. I know for me, what drives me really crazy, because I come from a long line of driving, I used to drive for a living for eight years even, and I'll tell you what, people in cars and the stupid things they do drive me absolutely loony. I used to drive over 100,000 miles a year. Right now, I've only driven not quite 4,000 miles in the past year. So I've relieved that stress, and it works. Or even on Facebook, for example, People on there who start giving you annoying comments or message you all the time, bother you day in and day out, get rid of them. Block them. Case closed, no more problem, instant better. <laughs> so, you know, something's really bothering you and just getting to your grind, get rid of it. Put it away, put it aside, change it. And if you do these things to make you feel better, get rid of those things that make you crazy every day, you will get out of a rut and feel a heck of a lot better, I promise. Number 10, complete your incomplete. Yes, I said complete 
your aid complete. Do you have a list of things that you want to get done? Or if you don't, you should start making one. That list will grow and grow and grow. You might need to do your filing, or you might need to do some laundry, or you might need to go shopping. There's so many things that people go through during the day, and that list just piles and piles and piles. And it's like you never get anywhere. I'll tell you what, I am really bad <laughs> at this, I must confess. My incompletes, they grow and they grow because I have so much I want to do. But if I don't take that list and try to at least scratch off two or three things from that list each week, I feel deeper and deeper in debt to my work where I'm not getting anywhere. And it really, really pushes me down like, like an elephant on my shoulders. So when I go back and I actually take the time, and it's not very much time at all, I take the time to actually complete some of those things I did not do. Oh, the world gets lifted off my shoulders. I feel so much better. So if you can just find a way to start completing just a couple of those tasks that you don't ever seem to get to, I guarantee it, you'll feel better, you'll do better, and you will get out of that business rut. So if you guys apply these top 10 strategies, you're guaranteed to get out of any business rut. Now, I have more value available for you for free, specifically for home business owners and entrepreneurs that you can access by clicking the link in the description. Carol Brown Earl, signing off and have a great day.